Hey, it's Steve. In this video, we're going to unbox and take a look at the Celestron C6, a 6-inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. Okay, so I purchased this telescope from High Point Scientific, and this is the way I received it in the mail. Uh, it was shipped by Priority Mail and uh, basically in a Celestron box, so pretty much probably as they received it on their end. So we'll go ahead and open it up, take a look. And there's some uh, notes here about recommending to save your packing foam. Um, and what's common for these Celestron telescopes is that it comes in a box that basically has a, a nice form-fitting uh, packing. And what can be done is this can be used inside of different types of uh, packing and carrying cases. Um, and you can basically just plop this right into the case and then you have basically a form-fitting case uh, for your telescope that's going to be um, you know, perfectly fitting for storage and transfer. So anyway, uh, we have some of our documentation. We have the OTA itself wrapped up um, as well as uh, some paper around it. Um, we have the, uh, the finder. I think this is a 6x30 finder. Uh, there's also a 25 millimeter eyepiece. This is a, a fossil. So it's a pretty good eyepiece um, for, for what it is. And you know, it's not going to be obviously a high power eyepiece and it's not going to be the lowest power you can get with this telescope, but it does provide a nice intermediate power um, and a, a place to start if you don't have any eyepieces. Uh, we also have a the diagonal, this is a one and a quarter inch diagonal. I believe this is a mirror diagonal, not a prism. Let's see here, it's hard to tell. Looking. Yeah, it is just a, a, a mirror diagonal. Again, I probably won't be using this on a telescope. I do have uh, a nice uh, Bader uh, T2 diagonal, which I'll be using on this telescope, um, which is uh, an upgrade. This is a nice diagonal just to start off, but, but you can get uh, higher end diagonals if you choose to do so down the road as a possible upgrade. And that, and that will improve your image a little bit. Um, the uh, improvement you get with a better diagonal is, you know, something maybe on the order of 10%. It's not going to be dramatic usually, but, uh, you know, every little bit can kind of help improve the views. And you can obviously use them on different telescopes over time, so they are transferable. Now the OTA itself, again, in the uh, packaging here, we'll get the box out of the way. So again, this is the, the uh, way it does come wrapped. There is uh, some paper around here just to help prevent scratching. I've had a C6 in the past, and what I had noticed at the time was that this, this lettering here is, uh, you know, is painted on in some way. I'm not sure exactly how, they, how they've done it, but uh, in the past, I've had a C6, and the letters are actually stickers that were stuck on there, and those would, with time, you know, move and get, you know, come off and that kind of thing. Um, so that was an older version. Um, the current one, you know, does have nice lettering on here, so that's a nice improvement from the one that I had in the past. It does have the Starbright XLT coatings. Taking a closer look at the back here. Uh, here we have our focuser, our visual back, which is a one and a quarter inch visual back, and you can slide your diagonal into here and secure it with these thumb screws. Uh, the, the diagonal that I have has a uh, SCT threads already on there so I can actually remove this whole visual back piece uh, and screw the diagonal directly onto there, which I like to do. Um, I do like to use bino viewers and uh, when you use those or a heavy eyepiece, there is some potential where you could have the diagonal uh, in a visual back like this because it's just held on with these thumb screws. Uh, you could have a diagonal actually spin around and then possibly your eyepiece or your bino viewers could fall, hit the concrete or, or the ground in some manner and, and cause damage. So, but uh, if, you know, for regular eyepieces, uh, this visual back with the diagonal is, is gonna be fine for most cases. We have our Vixen dovetail here on the bottom. And looking at the objective here, this cap just pops off. So anyway, now let's take a look at some of the details and specifications of this telescope.
So before looking at the specifications of the C6, let's take a look at how the interior of the SCT telescope operates. Now the SCT has three primary lenses and mirrors that focus the light into the back end of a telescope. The first part is the corrector lens through which the light passes as it enters a telescope. Uh, that, that light then bounces off the primary mirror, which is a large mirror at the back of a telescope. Uh, that light then bounces forward off a secondary mirror in the middle of the corrector plate, which then focuses the light backwards through the baffle tube and towards the diagonal and or eyepiece at the back end of the telescope. Now looking at the actual specifications, I measured the aperture to be about 153, a little bit under that, uh, millimeters in diameter. Um, the focal length is stated at 1,500, but it does vary with your configuration when you do have a larger diagonal and eyepiece, it can actually be longer than that. And so while the F ratio is F10 at the no normal focal length, it can be longer than that um, depending on your configuration, but it can be be as low as f6.3 if you do buy the reducer that's available. Now looking at the secondary obstruction that was measured to, measured to be 56.9 millimeters with a pair of calipers which gives you a 37 percent obstruction by diameter. Now as we look at the overall length of the telescope, I measured that at 13 and a half to 14 inches depending on the exact part that you measure it from um, front to back. But that does not include the focuser knob which adds about one more inch. So that kind of puts you in that 14 to 15 inch range if you actually include the diagonal though and an eyepiece and again it depends on the size of the diagonal you use. That can get you up to 17 or 18 inches uh, potentially. Now looking at total weight, I measured the weight to be about 7 pounds or 3.2 kilograms bare. If you include your diagonal and finder scope and an eyepiece, you're looking at around eight and a half pounds. Again, obviously, a uh, heavier diagonal, a heavier eyepiece can put you nine and a half pounds or, or so. But generally speaking, you should be under 10 pounds in most configurations. Now, looking at the rear port where the light exits the telescope, that was measured to be 25.5 millimeters, and that limits the your overall field of view you're going to get with this telescope. Again, it is a longer focal length scope, and so you're not going to get those three and four degree wide field views of the Milky Way, um, but you can get up to 1.3 degrees of a field of view if you use a reducer, about 1 to 1.1 degrees if you don't. Uh, and so that's usually wide enough for the vast majority of objects in the night sky. But again, if you want some of, some of those wide sweeping views of objects in the Milky Way, um, you're, you're, you're going to need to look at another telescope type like a refractor to get those. Now looking at likes and dislikes, uh, the, again the main likes is very portable and lightweight for a scope of 6 inches in, in aperture. You get very good optics for an SCT, again it's not going to be as good as a refractor, but for an SCT the optics are quite good. You have all the SCT accessories that are available, which is quite a few of them, and you do have a fairly low price for an SCT, again I, I bought this for $400 from High Point Scientific and it's a great buy if you can get it at that price. Now dislikes, again you have the slower cooldown versus a refractor which can impact your views during the winter time especially. Um, so you have to take steps to kind of counteract that. Uh, the optics, while good for an SCT, are not going to be as good as a refractor. You're always going to have, you know, a five-inch refractor that is going to beat a six-inch SCT in generally all cases. Um, so that is a consideration. But to get a five-inch refractor is going to cost much more money. You're going to have a much larger scope, longer and heavier. And so you know, that is the opposite sort of side of things. If you, if you want to go big, you can obviously, you know, get better views, but to have something that's compact, it does do very well. Uh, again, you have a limited field of view with the SCT. It is a long focal length scope. And so if you want wide sweeping views, you do still need to have that shorter focal length refractor on hand to sort of complement that long focal length you get with the SCT. Okay, so the C6, I've had this now for about two weeks. I've used it outside. Uh, for several observing sessions so far. I do, for the most part, like it. Um, it is very portable. I'm using it on this Twilight One mount from Explorer Scientific. The whole thing can be carried outside, uh, fully assembled with the scope on the mount and the eyepieces on the tray. I can carry the whole thing out with one arm, um, have the other arm free to open doors and that kind of thing is very portable in that regard. Um, but overall, again, a nice telescope, uh, you know, for the money. And that's really one of the key things. You can pick up this scope uh, from High Point Scientific like I did or other vendors uh, for sometimes less than $400. And so at that price point, this is really an excellent buy for a six inch telescope. We're not gonna get anything, um, you know, this compact with optics as good as this uh, at that price point. And so it is certainly a good choice if you're looking for something uh, this size at around this price point, I would certainly recommend taking a look at the Celestron C6.